Mike Pettin Coaches Show, presented by Liberty Ford, continues. Welcome back to the Mike Pettin Coaches Show, driven by Liberty Ford. It's time now for our PNC Bank Film Breakdown. So we take a look at Paul Kruger getting to the quarterback against the Bengals. Dalton gets pressured and goes down. Sacked by Mingo and Kruger. Obviously not a lot of highlights for the Browns in this one, but we did find one on the defensive side of the football we want to take a look at here. Third and nine on the Browns, 20. The Bengals looking to go in, get a touchdown. The Browns need to stop on third down, so we'll set the scene for you here. Andy Dalton in shotgun. He's going to have two receivers to his left, one to the right. The Browns showing potentially rushing five guys here in the pre-snap look, trying to say, hey, maybe this can be a little bit of a blitz coming here as they show it, and Dansby moves up. Now they send Bernard in motion and the Browns reveal what they're doing. You're going to have four guys basically in coverage over here on two. He's going to have the deep middle of the field watching for a cross or maybe it's the tight end coming across here. Dalton sends him out. They know that what's happening there. It's not a man look for the Browns. It's a more of a zone look. As the play starts to develop, Desmond Bryant gets a great push, knocks this guy down. Andy Dalton's going to see this lane try to step up. I think he wants the tight end here, but he would have to thread the needle with a good high bracketed coverage here. Good coverage here, good coverage here, short of the sticks. He's looking for the first down. you got double coverage down here on A.J. Green. So really, that's the only place for Andy Dalton to go with the ball. But because of that pressure, he kind of feels it coming from this side and sees this lane. I think he wants to be able to try to step up and get a better angle to hit the tight end on that crosser. But Paul Kruger sheds the block, comes in, gets him as Amingo comes in as well and we'll take a look at it now from this much better angle here pre-snap you see the Browns five guys down they're talking about what's going to happen if Kirksey blitzes etc but once they send the guy in motion the Browns reveal their coverage Kirksey drops out Dansby goes out great job by Des Bryant says to the guard get out of here all of a sudden Andy Dalton sees his guy on his feet and as you see the play develop Mingo's going to have this inside loop here to him he thinks he's got to step up and get into this lane but what Paul Kruger does Use his leverage, great job of pushing the tackle up the field. He comes back down and gets the sack. Kruger and Mingo combine, and that was the highlight of the day, really, for the Browns on defense. All right, Coach, that was one play where you guys did get to the quarterback. Not something that you've done probably as frequently as you would like this year. What has you seen in the pass rush that gives you some hope over the final four games and, and going forward? Well, it starts with the inside guys, and, and I think the one guy kind of lost in our lack of success, the one guy that's, that's rushing a passer at a high level is, is, uh, is, is uh, Des Bryant. He's, uh, he's had some sacks. Uh, he's had a lot of quarterback hits. He's affected the quarterback, you know, forced him to get off the spot. So, so he's, done a, uh, he's done a good job. And then, uh, you know, looking on the outside, it was good to see. You know, Kruger's had so many near misses this year. It was nice to see last week that he... He finally, uh, finally pushed through and, and, and got himself some production. Yeah, according to Pro Football Focus, he actually has more hurries, hits, and sacks, a higher percentage than he did a year ago when he got there a little more often, over 11 sacks. And he talked about Des Bryant on that play when you watch that in PNC Bank Film Breakdown. He chucked that guard back on the ground. I think that's what spooked Dalton and had him get up there. All right, time now for hashtag Ask Pet. And we'll start with this. Coach, which rookie on the team has made the most improvement from training camp until now? That's a good question. I, I don't know if I have any one answer. I, I do know that our, our defensive rookies have have uh, have come a long way. Not not any slight against uh, Duke or any of those guys on on offense, but Danny's made progress. His best games have have been of late. Um, but the, the one guy, if I if he had to make me just say one name, it's it's Ibrahim Campbell. Okay. He's he's done an outstanding job for for Chris Tabor on special teams. When we put him in there on defense, it hasn't been too big for him. He's he's been very physical. I mean, he is a strong player. He's and he, he's not shy. Like there, he has no problems going against a bigger guy, uh, if if that's the matchup. So, uh, very pleased with where with where he is, and um, you know, looking forward for him to finish out the season strong. As we go through these final four games, is he a guy that might get some increased snaps at the safety position? So you kind of see what you have in him. He could, he could. I mean, but you got Gip and and Witt. It's hard to hard to get those guys off sure. the field. You know, we get, we have some three safety stuff, but Jordan Porter is a big a big part of that. Who's who's played at a high level for us, as well. So sometimes it's while you want to do it, uh, it's a little bit easier to say you can do it instead of instead of getting it done. How different is terminology and offense defense amongst various teams? For example, the same play being called different things around the league. Well, it's funny. I think you have to trace everybody's system kind of back to its roots. So okay. you, you have West Coast terminology that it gets traced a certain way, and you know this route concept gets called this in a West Coast system, and gets called this in, in, in other people's systems. Uh, and even defensively, 
uh, it's funny, I always equate it to learning a foreign language. So you, you, know what, you know what an apple is, but what's an apple in Spanish? How do you say apple in German? How do you say it? But it's, everybody knows the concept. Sure. But it's, what, what's the word that we use? So th that's a big part of it is, is when guys come in, is just kind of having that translate, you know, the, the translation form. Uh, and there's enough systems around the league where it's funny where you see a lot of the terminology does, does carry over from team to team. All right, and the final hashtag, Ask Pet, growing up, the NBA season's underway, so growing up, favorite NBA team and favorite NBA player? Well, I grew up outside of Philly, so it's, uh, I was a Sixers fan growing up, so uh, it's a pretty easy one for me. I was a huge, huge Dr. J fan. So good. But I loved that whole team. I went to the, snuck out of school, skipped school to go to the parade in, uh, in, in 82. Um, Did your dad know about this? Um, he found out about it later. So okay. I, that was one where that <laughs> I was I would gladly take I gladly took the punishment because uh, that was that was a blast. But oh, no, just that, that whole team, um, you know Moses Malone and Mo Cheeks and Andrew Tony and Bobby Jones and uh, that was just such a fun team to watch and uh, you know they really ca kind of captured the city. And uh, that, was, that was a great run. But Dr. J was a guy for me that uh, you're just always amazed by. You know, he was doing Jordan-type things, but, you know, just floating through the oh, air yeah. and the reverse layups and, uh, and then doing it with the, with the high socks and the big afro. It's funny to look, look back on it now. But, no, that was, that's an easy one for me. Dr. J, Coach, thanks you so much for the time. Good luck on Sunday against the San Francisco 49ers. Great. Thank you. All right, we'll be back with more of the Mike Pettin Coaches Show. We talk with one of those defensive rookies who we know has turned a lot of heads. Nate Orchard joins us in studio when the show returns here on News Channel 5.